All right, here we're going to look at uh, when you have a function and you replace y with some number times y, a times y. All right, so the, wherever the y is, uh, replacing it with some number, like you could have, again, if we just look at any old function here, if you make this change where you replace this with, say, 2y uh, or, or 10y, or whatever, right? It could be a number bigger like that, bigger than uh, 1 that you're multiplying it by, or it could be a number uh, smaller than 1, right? Like a half y. So that's what we're looking at here, and maybe the first thing to realize is likely if you see a function written, it won't be written like that because often you don't, you want to have it where the y is isolated all by itself. So before we get too far into this, it's important to realize a function like that, okay, I'm going to write it over here so we got some space, 2y is f of x. You could write that instead with this 2 on the other side, but if it's on the other side, it needs to be a 1 half. And the reason that that is is because if you were to divide both sides by 2 like that, right, you can't, that, that 2 cancels out and you end up with a half f of x. All right, it's kind of the shortcut to think about then is, uh, like you've seen before, if you have an operation, if you have an equation that has uh, a single thing on each side, if you have if you have something multiplied by 2 on one side, that's going to be the same as if it was divided by 2 on the other side, that inverse operation. All right, so you can, you can maybe in your mind make the connection between... 2y equals f of x being the same as y equals a half f of x. So that's the first thing to notice. Maybe just for completion, let's let's uh, look at these other ones too. Let's make some space first. Uh, you know, 10y equals f of x. This would be y equals one tenth f of x. And then if it's a number smaller than one over there. Right, a half y equals f of x would be the same as y equals 2 f of x. That's the first thing to notice. Second thing to notice is that uh, even when we change it so that the number is on this side with the f of x as opposed to the other side with the y, it's still important to realize that it's not, that number is not inside the function. You're not replacing x with anything. It's still f of x, and then the, the number you're multiplying on either side is outside of that, right? This 1 tenth is outside of the function. This 2 is outside of the function. And similarly up here. Okay, so it's not a change to x, it's a change to y. It's a change outside of that function. So let's look at what happens uh, in terms of the graph. Now this is uh, this, this kind of crazy uh, function that I created here because I wanted this zigzag thing. But let's not worry about what the function actually is right now. We won't worry about what the equation is. We're just going to look at the shape right now. And so I, I called it f of x just so that I can refer to it now without having to write all that stuff and get hung up on, on the notation. If we have y equals f of x, that's what's drawn in orange there. Now we are going to do, let's try so, to start it off simply, let's make it 2y equals f of x. And you notice there in the picture that we have something that is uh, shorter, smaller. But if you look carefully at it, let's realize how it's been changed. It's been changed so that if you notice the corresponding points here, like say that point, um, which I will try again to highlight there, that point, 1, negative 4, is now 1, negative 2. All right? This point that was 4 units away from the x-axis is now 2 units away. Similarly here, this point is negative 4, 6 on the original function. Now it's negative 4, 3. The y value is half as much. x value is the same. Those two points correspond to each other. x value is the same. y value is half as much. All the way along here, that's going to be true. You pick any point. That point right there, negative 2, 2. That one's gone to negative 2, 1. Right? All the points are, the y values are half as much. And what that means is actually, uh, all the points have moved, except for these two points in here. That point, since the y value is 0, 
it's already at the x-axis. It can't get half the distance from the x-axis because it's already there. Half of zero is zero, so those points, that point, and that point don't change. Those two points are called invariant points, but all the other points move closer to the x-axis. This is a vertical compression. Okay, vertical compression, because all the vertical distances are half as much. Often people, uh, to describe this, they say this is a vertical compression about the x-axis, meaning this is where the line where they're all getting closer to, right? This point has moved half the distance um, closer to the x-axis, this point. All the distance is from this line. So often they talk about it and say, because um, if you're reading in your textbook or some other textbooks, it'll say a compression or a stretch about the x-axis. Let's be clear that the, the change is vertical, right? The y values have changed. Okay, that 6 turns into a, a 3. x value hasn't changed. All right, so that's important to realize there. Now you notice that it might uh, seem a little backwards that when you put a 2, a number larger than 1, you get this thing that's shorter. And then the other side of that is if you put a number smaller than 1 there, if you put a half there, you have the thing that's now taller, right? Say for this point, this point was 1, negative 4, now it's 1, negative 8, right? All the distances from the x-axis are doubled. This is a vertical expansion. The thing's been stretched up and down. It isn't any wider. It hasn't changed horizontally. It's not any wider, but it's taller. Okay, it's taller in both directions, down and up. Any point you pick is now twice as far. That one was negative 2, 2. Now it's negative 2, 4. Okay, it's not that you're adding something, it's that you're multiplying. If you take all the, the distances, now they're going to be multiplied. Now, of course, before we leave the graphs here, as we said before, instead of writing a half y equals f of x, we could have instead written on this side, we could say that that's y equals 2f of x. All right, so a half over here is the same as a 2 on the other side. That's important to know and get it straight in your mind which way it is, right? Because you, if you just try and memorize it, it's not going to make much sense. This, this kind of makes actually perfect sense when you think about it. If you put a 2 in front of that function, whatever values you calculated there, right, f of x, so you, whatever values come, come out of this crazy function, if you put a 2 in front, they're all just going to be doubled, right? Whatever value you came up with for f of x, now it's going to be twice that much. If you put a 1 half in front of that, whatever value you came up with f, for f of x, now it's going to be half of that, all right? Now let's look at the let's look at the table um, table of values here, all right? So this is uh, this is that original function. Let's say we start at the left side. Negative four gives us six. Negative three gives us four, and so on, right? Negative two, and if we continue that down, um, we have some numbers. Now actually, the function ended at four, so five here says it's undefined, so we can delete that. Now if you look at the transformed function here, we replaced y with 0.5y to start with here, or uh, y with y equals 2f of x, right? Those are the equivalent equations for this function. 0.5 on that side or 2 on that side. If we have negative 4 here now, it's going to give us a y value that's twice as much. Okay, if we have negative 3 here, same thing. Negative 3, 4 goes to negative 3, 8. And if you continue that down, which we can do like this, you you pick any set of points there other than that one because it's hard to tell that. We'll come back to that one in a second. 0, negative 2 has gone to 0, negative 4. Right? Every, any pair of corresponding points that you pick, y value is twice as much. Other than, while it still holds true, the y value is twice as much because two twice as much as zero is zero. That thing is an invariant point. Invariant point means it doesn't change, right? Coordinates are the same on the new and the, the, the transformed and the original function. And there's that other invariant point. Those two points were the points on the axis, right? Those two points were the points on the axis here. Right? That point and that point, invariant points on the graph, the ones on the axis. In the table are the ones that 
haven't had any values changed. Uh, now the other way was this way, uh, when we had 2y, right? So that was that was now this one, 2y or, right, 2 over here, not a 1, a 2 over here, or 1 half over here, okay? So that one was the vertical compression. Right, so if you if you keep going with these numbers, you should see that the y values are half as much, right? And they are here. Let's uh, fill that down a little bit, and I did it again. Where my undefined point we don't need, and if we keep going with this now, you're going to see that the values are all half as much. Okay, values half as much. Pick any set of points and compare them. Right, negative two becomes negative one, but the x value doesn't change. All right. So, to kind of uh, summarize that, let's uh, let's write out a few notes here. Uh, we had when we had y equals f of x changing to a y equals f of x, or you could write it as y equals one over a. Right? I don't want to get hung up on. Uh, on that too much the the notation but when we had the number on when we had the number on this side so we're looking at when it's on that that opposite or the side with the y uh, when a was a number larger than one okay when that's a number larger than one it kind of does the opposite this was a vertical compression Uh, by a factor of 1 over a. And the other side of that was when a was uh, less than 1, it was a vertical expansion by a factor of 1 over a. Okay, whatever that value is, the reciprocal. It's a it's a expansion of compression by whatever the reciprocal is. If this was a ten here, right, it's going to be a compression by one tenth. If this was a you know one fifth here, it's going to be an expansion by the reciprocal of that five, right? Now, one last thing to add here is to think about uh, this. Actually, we should say that it's greater than zero because if we allow a to be less than zero, in other words, if a is also a negative number, uh, we're getting into kind of combining transformations, which we're going to look at down the road here a bit. Um, not right now. If you had negative 2 y equals f of x, we're going to think of that as a couple different changes. We're going to look at the, the negative separately than the 2, all right? Combining a reflection and a, uh, and a compression. All right, so that, before we get into that, that is uh, vertical expansions and compressions. Uh, actually, one last note here is that a word you see often for this is called a stretch. So if you do that to a function, it's called a, a vertical stretch by a factor of 2. And some sometimes people call that also a stretch, even though it's shorter. They say it's a stretch by 1 half. All right, stretch by a factor of one half about the x-axis, and uh, you can use either uh, either terms. All right, that is it.